Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy are defending freedom of religious expression and fighting back against the domestic enemies of the Constitution. I also interview Michael Berry, an attorney with the Liberty Institute who is defending freedom of speech for the cadets. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The anti-Jesus complainer, Mikey Weinstein, says that there is now a revolt underway at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, as dozens, perhaps hundreds of cadets are now posting Bible verses on their whiteboards outside of their cadet dormitory rooms after one cadet was censored and threatened with punishment for posting Bible verses on his whiteboard. The Blaze newspaper reports, cadets are angry over the Air Force Academy's removal of the verse, and now they have begun posting scriptures from the Bible and even the Koran on their whiteboards in solidarity. Not only supporting their fellow cadet, but now they are in full and open rebellion to what I believe is the domestic enemy of the Constitution, Mikey Weinstein. He is the anti-Christian president of the Militant Religion Foes Foundation, and he lodged a complaint with the Air Force Academy, and then he boasted that within only two hours and nine minutes, the Air Force Academy leaders forced the cadet to remove his scripture from his whiteboard. Here are some examples of whiteboard uh, displays, right? We even have one from the Koran. One of the cadets is now rebelling to Mikey by posting the Koran, which says, there shall be no compulsion in religion. Another cadet said, blessed are you when you're insulted and persecuted. Uh, here's a quote from Mikey himself. He said, the Air Academy has a revolt on their hands. What are they gonna do? Those who put Bible verses on their doors deserve non-judicial punishment at the very least. He actually wants to punish cadets for quoting the Bible, for exercising their First Amendment rights. This is a domestic enemy of the Constitution who's failed in all five of the lawsuits that I'm aware of that he's filed against the Air Force or even against me. He wants to silence cadets who say the Bible. Well, here's a response from the superintendent, Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson, who said, with the mentorship of the active duty commanding officer and as part of the discussion, in other words, the AOC went and lectured this cadet. The cadet squadron commander raised this potential perception and the cadet voluntarily elected to erase the scripture. You know what? She's caving in to Mikey and we need to take action. Here's a phone number I want everyone to call, 719-333-7731. That's the phone number to the Air Force Academy switchboard for the public affairs officer and send this message to Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson, Jesus and the Bible are not illegal speech for cadets. Stop cowering to the complainer, Mikey Weinstein. Again, her phone number, 719-333-7731. Let's take a moment and pray. Here's a scripture that I wanna pray from Acts chapter four. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And this reminds me of uh, the demonic spirit that was inside of the Pharisees who, who threatened Peter and John that they must not preach or teach or anything at all in the name of Jesus. But they answered in the next verse, who are you Pharisees? Should we obey men or should we obey God? Father, I pray that these cadets will be blessed to obey God even if they have to disobey complainers like Mikey. God, we pray your blessing upon all of them in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Michael Berry, attorney with Liberty Institute, is defending the cadets. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. 
This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm now joined via Skype from Dallas, Texas with my new friend, Michael Berry, an attorney with Liberty Institute. Their website is libertyinstitute.org. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for having me, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Now, uh, tell us about Liberty Institute. Before we get into the scandal at the Air Force Academy, uh, you guys defend religious freedom? That's right, we're actually the largest uh, law firm dedicated solely to defending religious liberty in America. Well, that's fantastic. And our friend Kelly Shackelford is the president and CEO there. And your title is Senior Counsel and Director of Military Affairs. So you're offering free legal assistance to cadets at the Air Force Academy in light of this re recent scandal? That's right. Cadets, airmen, and, and any service member, really, who's serving and, and feels that their religious freedom is being violated. And I guess your views as, a, as someone who actually defends freedom of speech are counter opposite to somebody like Mikey Weinstein who is suing to silence cadets to stop them from having freedom of speech. Uh, what is your general take on what is happening at the Air Force Academy? I understand you flew to Colorado Springs and you met with some people? That's right, I, I was able, as soon as I heard this controversy had erupted, I got on the next flight I could to Colorado Springs and uh, no sooner had I landed than I was able to arrange a meeting with some cadets. And I wanna be clear, these are cadets of different religious backgrounds, so uh, I, I wasn't just meeting with cadets of one particular faith or, or background. And, and really, I wanted to know firsthand from cadets what had happened and what uh, their opinion was, or at least w what the, the sentiment was amongst the cadets. And uh, really there were kind of four major takeaways from my meeting with the cadets. And, and, and first is uh, they said, you know, traditionally they have been allowed to write personal messages or, or private messages, if you will, on, on whiteboards that are outside of their dorm rooms. And, and so this wasn't anything out of the ordinary for somebody to write something uh, like this on their whiteboard. And I said, okay, well, w what kind of things are you allowed to write? And they said, well, you can write just about whatever you want. I mean, something as, as uh, innocuous as, hey, Joe, we're going to go play basketball this afternoon. Meet us at the gym. Or, uh, hey, can you, you know, pick me up at, at, at 7 o'clock to go to dinner or something like that. Um, and then, obviously, on the other end of the spectrum, there are, They've traditionally been permitted to write, uh, you know, quotes, sayings, slogans, whether it be go Air Force, beat Navy, uh, whether it be uh, uh, an inspirational quote from Vince Lombardi uh, cheering on the Broncos in the Super Bowl, or, or even they can draw inspiration from uh, religious references, such as the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, etc. So and, the controversy in this case was that some cadets wrote Bible verses 
and that offended some atheist complainers like Mikey Weinstein who made a phone call to the lawyers and the Air Force Academy pressured the cadets to erase those Bible verses from their whiteboards. Is that what you were told? Well, what, what I was told is that they, really that actually Mikey Weinstein kind of instigated and even escalated this in terms of the, the media perception, but that he had very little to do with the actual removal of the verse, that he, that he, he perhaps overstated his significance or even his involvement in, in the situation. And, and, the, and the cadets said, Really, the general consensus on campus there is that Mikey Weinstein is seen as a as a nuisance, and that they try to ignore him, uh, you know, really in essence, and and that so the the cadet in question who wrote this verse apparently some of his fellow cadets talked to him and maybe spoke to him a little bit about whether it was appropriate, the the right time and place kind of thing, and 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 if if this was something that. Uh, he really wanted to, to press, and after speaking with his fellow cadets, he decided the cadet who, who wrote the verse originally decided to to erase it voluntarily. Uh, and and then, in response, however, to the public perception, which was that the academy had forced this cadet to remove it, uh, we began hearing reports of other cadets then writing verses and other types of quotes on their whiteboards, kind of as a show of solidarity, which is to be expected at a place like the Air Force Academy where they're trained to come to the defense and stand united with their one of their cadets that they feel might be in trouble. Well, that's fascinating. And I did read a quote from the superintendent of the Air Force Academy, Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson, and she said that it was with pressure or with uh, the commanding officer, the AOC, was part of the discussion with that cadet before he voluntarily erased that scripture. So do you think there is, uh, is there an academy policy that was violated? Uh, is there some discussion about what is the law at the Air Force Academy? Well, that was one of the other things the cadets told me, uh, that, that the fourth and probably most important thing that I got from speaking with those cadets is there was some frust real frustration amongst them because they don't know what the policy is. It's never been clearly articulated. They don't have clarity. They don't have guidance. They want to know, are they allowed to write something like a Bible verse on their whiteboard? And if they do, are they going to get punished for it? Are they going to be disciplined? And what kind of discipline are we talking about? A slap on the hand or excusal from the Air Force Academy? Uh, and this is their entire, you know, they've worked their entire academic careers to get to this point, and, and their future livelihoods uh, frequently rest on how well they do at the academy. So this is something that they want to be able to continue to do, but are fearful that if they do it, are they going to subject themselves to discipline or punishment? And to answer your other question, the superintendent, I mean, the Air Force Academy themselves stated that there was no misconduct. And my question to the Air Force Academy then, if he did, if the cadet didn't do anything wrong, then why was he, whether or not it came from an, an Air Academy official, why was he peer pressured then into removing this verse? Why wasn't he allowed to just leave it be? You're absolutely right. And we are encouraging people to call the Air Force Academy Public Affairs Hotline at 719-333-7731 and ask that question. Why are cadets being pressured or asked when it's not a violation of policy to remove Christian scriptures from their whiteboards? Again, that phone number 719-333-7731. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Michael Berry about the Air Force regulations, AFI 1-1 and uh, DOD 1300.17 and the First Amendment. What does the law say about freedom of speech in the military? We'll be right back after this short break. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? 
It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FaxCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FaxCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FaxCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FaxCongress.com. FaxCongress.com. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again via Skype from Dallas, Texas by my new friend, Michael Berry. He's with libertyinstitute.org and you are a attorney who defends religious freedom and you, we were talking about your experience. You met some cadets at the Air Force Academy who were pressured or at least voluntarily erased some scripture verses from their whiteboards. Now you also, besides talking to cadets, you talked to some lawyers at the Air Force Academy and what did you learn? Well, I was able to speak with the senior JAG officer there at the Academy. So this is the top legal advisor to the superintendent, Lieutenant General Johnson. And we had a, a long discussion and I asked him point blank uh, whether the cadet removed the verse voluntarily or whether the cadet was told to remove the verse. And he responded uh, that the cadet removed it voluntarily after some discussions with fellow cadets at, at the AOC, et cetera. And I asked the question, uh, I said, Colonel, now what if this cadet had decided that this verse was particularly meaningful to him and he wanted to leave the verse on his whiteboard? What, what would happen then? And he said, well, uh, and he would have to advise the superintendent that in accordance with Air Force policy, they, that he would advise her to either direct the cadet to remove the verse or that the Air Force Academy officials should remove the verse uh, for the cadet if the cadet didn't want to do it, uh, which was very troubling to me because that appears to run directly afoul of the Constitution and specifically the First Amendment, uh, federal law as well as, as military regulations. So that's also conflicts with the public statement by the Air Force Academy that no policy was violated. Did he cite a specific policy that the cadet was in violation of? Well, it, it, the cadet theoretically would have been in violation, yeah, of Air, Air Force Instruction 1-1, uh, which d talks about, there's one section 2.11 uh, of that instruction that talks about government neutrality towards religion. The thing about that, paragraph though, government neutrality towards religion, is it's really talking about uh, not violating the Establishment Clause by using your official position as a member of the Air Force to establish religion. That's clearly not what was happening here. This is a, this is a cadet simply writing a Bible verse on a whiteboard. And the response I got was, well, he's in a position of leadership. And, and as a position, in a position of leadership, it could create the perception amongst his fellow cadets or amongst the public in general that he's using that position of leadership to force his religious beliefs on others, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely preposterous that that, that would be the case. And, and even beyond that, as far as I understand, every one of these cadets is training and hopefully will one day be sworn in as officers in the Air Force. And if that's true, then they're all leaders. And if that's the case, then none of them are allowed to write verses on their whiteboard. But Con that was contrary to what I was told, which is, well, and if a cadet's not in a leadership position, then then under Air Force Instruction 1-1, they would probably be allowed to write the, vice, the, the verse on their whiteboard and keep it there. But if they're in a position of leadership, then they wouldn't. So now this further muddies the waters, which is why these cadets said they don't even know what the policy is, because it appears to create this situation where if you're in a leadership position, you don't have First Amendment rights. But if you're in a non-leader position, then you do. Well, that's not what the First Amendment says. It applies to all Americans. That's right. At what rank do you get promoted to in the military when suddenly you lose your First Amendment rights? And that's uh, you know, an oxymoron. I think the First Amendment applies to everybody and also the constitutional prohibition against a religious litmus test for office. If a senior ranking military member is you know, saying, oh, you can't get promoted, or as Mikey Weinstein says, you should get non-judicial punishments so that you never get promoted, uh, then 
Senior ranking officers suddenly have to be atheist or they have to be secular. They have a religious litmus test which promotes them from becoming an officer at a senior rank and that violates the constitution. Well, and Mr. Weinstein has publicly asked or demanded that the cadets who are writing these verses be court-martialed or punished for violating the law. And what, what's ridiculous about that is that actually, not only the Constitution, but we have a federal law, uh, and we also have a DOD regulation, all three of which actually trump an Air Force instruction. You know, the Constitution, superior to the Air Force instruction, federal law, superior, military, DOD instruction, superior. All three of those say, that our service members have and retain the right to religious expression. And what was probably the most troubling thing that came out of that meeting with the JAG officer is that he said, yes, but those, that, especially that, that DOD instruction, which is the one I'm speaking about is 1300.17, which was signed into effect January 24th of 2014. So it's a very recent instruction. And it says service members have the right to freely, to individual expression of their religious beliefs. And we have a, a copy of that instruction on the screen here. We're gonna show our audience. Uh, and by the way, our ministry helped petition Congress to change the law twice in the last two years, in January of 2012, uh, and also of, uh, I think January of 2014. The, the NDAA was modified to specifically allow freedom of religious expression. The federal law was changed and then the DOD complied by writing these words in 1300.17, in accordance with section 533 of public law, unless it could have an adverse impact on military readiness, unit cohesion and good order and discipline, the military departments will accommodate individual expressions of sincerely held beliefs conscience, moral principles, or religious beliefs of service members in accordance with the policies and procedures of this instruction. So in other words, cadets have freedom of religious expression, but you're, the lawyers at the academy are saying that that only applies to the dress code, it doesn't apply to freedom of speech or freedom of the press? That's what I was told, and, and, and to be clear, this wasn't coming from one of the academy lawyers, this is coming from the very top. This is from the Pentagon, from the three-star general uh, who is the, the the senior legal, uh, the mm -hmm. senior attorney within the Air Force, that uh, March of last year, he issued, the, the Air Force three-star general, issued a policy memorandum uh, interpreting the federal law that you just mentioned to mean that the term, and, and this is what gives lawyers a bad reputation here, is that he's parsing words and interpreting the phrase religious exercise to mean only that you have the right to, to, to believe whatever you wanna believe but that your actions and speech, which would include writing a verse on a whiteboard, that stem from your religious belief are not necessarily protected. And so the, the Air Force Academy is bound by that policy interpretation that, that the three star handed down. So that's really what was relayed to me was, look, the, the, the Pentagon is telling us that this is how the Air Force is to interpret federal law and then, uh, and then and by extension, Department of Defense Instruction 1300.17, which is that A, religious exercise and religious belief really doesn't extend as far as writing a verse on a whiteboard or even verbally saying, uh, uh, you know, quoting the Bible out loud. And, and then beyond that, when I said, well, but 1300.17 clearly says that an individual expression is pr protected. They said, well, uh, the Air Force's interpretation, again, is that 1300.17 is really only applies within the context of religious grooming and apparel standards. So if a, if a service member wanted to wear a head covering or grow a beard as a central tenant of their faith, then th they would be protected under 1300.17, but not if they wanted to write a verse on their whiteboard or, or even share a verse verbally with, with a friend. And, and that was actually repeated by Air Force Chief of Staff, General Welsh, uh, on the floor of Congress just last week when he said, look, the, what the First Amendment means, uh, at least in his understanding of it, is that if somebody asks you, then you're allowed to share your faith, but only if somebody asks you. Well, once again, that's not what the Constitution says. And if there's any ambiguity in the law or in military regulation or in federal law, the number one rule of thumb is, don't interpret it in a way that violates the Constitution. You always choose the option that doesn't violate the Constitution. And unfortunately, the Air Force is not, is not taking that option, which is baffling to me. 
You're absolutely right, Michael. And I'm telling you, somebody needs to sue them. Somebody needs to take a stand. Some cadet needs to stand up and get legal representation and demand freedom of speech. I think this should go to the courts, but people also need to petition Congress. We have petitions at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. We've been doing this for years. Congress has been agreeing with us, but right now Congress is being defied by this three-star general uh, that you're talking about at the, at the JAG officer, and also by the superintendent of the Air Force Academy, Michelle Johnson. I encourage people to call her today, toll free. Uh, it's not toll free, it's, the, the number is 719-333-7731. Again, that's 719-333-7731 and demand, say these words, Jesus and the Bible are not illegal speech. For cadets, stop cowering to the anti-Jesus complainer, Mikey Weinstein. Our guest has been Michael Berry. Thank you for defending those cadets. If they need legal representation, how do they contact you? They can go to our website and, and what is a toll-free number actually? There is a, a toll-free number on our website that they can call, it's confidential. It won't cost them anything. And we can simply explain to them what their constitutional rights are and if they want to be represented by us, we do so completely free of charge. That's what we do as a nonprofit. Thank you so much for that. And we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back after these words. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Welcome back. Our thanks to Michael Berry. Full disclosure that Mikey Weinstein and I are both Air Force Academy graduates. The difference is I love Jesus Christ and he hates Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 15, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. That's what Jesus said. God bless you in Jesus name, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.